Okay, today we're going to be moving on still with systems, but we're going to apply linear systems in some pretty tricky word problems. Because it's the middle of winter and this is a pretty tough lesson, I decided to put this beach background and hopefully it will relax us a little bit as we work through this concept. So we are going to focus on real world problem solving today, which means we're going to do some word problems that have applications in various circumstances. So I'm going to give you some tips. Whenever you're doing some real world problem solving, try to define your variables. So figure out what is it that I don't know that I'm trying to figure out. Um, try to relate your words to an equation. Most of you have become actual expert problem solvers with the equation now. So if you can get that into an equation, then you're good to go. Um, and then once you have these if you have a system of equations, then just choose the method that you think would be the most efficient of graphing substitution or elimination to solve the problem. And then this is very key. Check your work. But when you check your work, you need to make sure that you're checking it in the original problem. Because if you messed up in writing your equation, then it might check in your equation, but it might still make the original problem wrong. So you need to just make sure that it works in the original problem. Okay. So the first type of problem we're going to be focusing on is a mixture problem. Okay, when you're mixing two different solutions or um, things that have different percentages in them. Um, so here we go. This is a good science type problem. A chemist has one solution that is 50% acid. She has another solution that is 25% acid. Okay, but what she's trying to do is get a solution that's 40% acid by mixing these two, and she needs 10 liters of the solution. So what we need to do is come up with a good equation to help us solve this problem. So first thing I'm going to do, I know that I'm trying to figure out how many liters of each type of solution she needs. So it looks like the types of solutions are my variables. I'm going to call this 50% acid solution X. I'll, that will be the number of liters of the 50% acid. Okay. And then I'm going to call Y the number of liters of the 25% acid. And I'm going to try to come up with an equation for this. So this is pretty tricky. Um, the first thing that you want to do is you know that you need 10 liters of the solution altogether. Okay. So we're going to make an equation that represents our solution. So all I know is all together my number of liters of the 50% acid and the 25% acid has to add up to 10. So that's the easy equation, I think, of the two. X plus Y has to equal 10. Okay, and really the only other thing that I can work with here is my acid. Okay, and here's, this is kind of key here. The solution that's 50% acid, if there's x liters, there's 0.5 times x of acid. So like if there are 8 liters, there's going to be 0.5 times 8 or 4 liters of acid in that solution. Okay, the next one's y, 25% acid. So if there's y liters, then there's 0.25 times y amount of acid in that second solution. Okay, altogether this has to be 40% acid. So the key thing here is we're going to do 0.4 of the whole, which we know from above is 10 liters. So 0.4 of the 10 has to be acid. So if I do um, 0.5x, that's the acid in x, plus 0.25y, that's the acid in y, equals 0.4 times 10, that's the acid in the whole. Okay, so now we've got this lovely equation here, um, the system. And I want to solve it. So it looks like either substitution or elimination maybe seems good here. I might do elimination this time. They're both in y equals mx, or they're both in standard form. And I think if I multiply this bottom of equation by um, 2, negative 2, I guess, then I can get something nice to work with to get the x's to cancel out. So negative 2 times 0.5, that's negative x minus 0.5y equals, now the important thing here, 0.4 times 10, that was 4, so times negative 2 is negative 8. Okay, so now I have negative x minus 0.5y equals negative 8. In my original equation that I had, x plus y equals 10, I'm going to go ahead and add these up together. The x's cancel. y, I've got 0.5y, negative 8 plus 10 is 2, 
So now if I do this, I divide by 0.5. I'm going to get y equals 4. So I think I need 4 liters of 25% acid, which means because x plus y equals 10 that I should need 6 liters of 50% acid. And if I'm going to check this in the original equation, I need to see um, if I actually have this. 4 liters of 25%. So if I have 4 liters of 25%, then that's going to mean 1 liter of acid in the first one. Okay, and then that's 6 liters at 50%, so 50% of 6 is 3 liters. So then I have um, 1 liter of acid in the first one, 3 liters in the second. That means I have 4 liters of acid. And I want to know if that's really 40% of the solution. Well, 4 out of 10 really is 40%. So it seems like everything's checking out nicely. Okay? All right, so that's mixture type problems. You're going to see a similar setup for a lot of the problems that you're trying. Um, Okay, this next one is going to be a little bit easier for you, I think. Suppose you have a typing service. You buy a personal computer for $17.50 on which to do your typing, so that's an expensive computer. And you charge $5.50 per page for typing. Um, expenses are $0.50 cents per page for ink, paper, electricity, and other expenses. How many pages must you type to break even? So what I'm going to do in this type of situation is I want to relate two equations. I have an expenses equation and an income. Okay, So my expenses, they are going to equal $1,750 for the laptop, or the computer I guess, plus it looks like I have $0.50 cents per page, so I'm going to call P the number of pages, so 0.5P. My income, it looks like I just get $5.50 per page. Okay. So if I am going to break even, I want my expenses and my income to equal the exact same thing. So I would, I would, you know, if they want to be equal to the same thing, I could call them both Y or whatever if they're going to equal the same thing. Which means that these two expressions on the right need to equal each other. So I have 17, oops, 1750, no decimal point, sorry about that, plus 0.5P has to equal 5.5P. And if I'm solving this equation for p, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 0.5p from both sides. And then I have 1750 equals 5p. And then if I can divide both sides by 5, which I should be able to do in my head, but I'm resorting to the calculator, I'm going to get um, 350 equals p. So I think that they're going to need to type 350 pages to break even. And I'll leave checking that for you as an exercise because I want to make sure we have plenty of time for the last type of problem. Okay, so we'll call this a break-even problem. Um, that's one of the other three main types of problems you'll be focusing on in this unit. Okay, here's the last type. This is one of our famous distance equals rate times time problems. Okay, and this one's going to be tricky. Okay. So all we know, suppose it takes you seven hours to fly 2,800 miles from Miami, Florida to Seattle, Washington. At the same time, your friend flies from Seattle to Miami. His plane travels with the same average airspeed, but this flight only takes 5.6 hours. You need to find the average airspeed of the planes and then also the average wind speed. Okay, so this is getting tricky and you need to know a little bit about science and how flight works. Um, so basically, if you are flying Say you're in a lovely airplane. I'll, I'll just draw an arrow. That's my airplane. Okay. Um, and if the wind is pushing at your back, you go faster. So say you were flying 100 miles per hour, and then there was a wind that was coming, and you were going east. Say there was a wind that was also going east, um, that was going at 10 miles per hour. Relatively, it would seem like you're plane was flying 110 miles per hour because that wind speed would be pushing you faster. Okay, but if you were going that same 100 miles per hour, we'll still pretend that you're going east, but the wind was going west this time at 10 miles per hour, that's going to slow you down. It's going to act like you're only going 90 miles per hour. Okay, so that's the first important thing that we need to know about this. All right, it's distance rate time, so because you got kind of good at setting up the table for distance rate time, 
I might encourage it again. So we're, our two places that we're going is we're going to Seattle and then to Miami. Okay, so I know that the distance from Seattle to Miami is 2,800, both of the times it is, so that's good. And I also know my time. My time is 7 hours to Seattle, and it's 5.6 hours to um, Miami. And then you've got a couple ways to approach this problem. Um, one thing that I actually think is kind of one of the easiest ways is to just figure out what the rates must be first, um, because rate times time equals distance. So then that means rate must equal distance divided by time. So here in the first one, I have 2,800 divided by 7. I know that they're, um, they must be going at 400 miles per hour. Okay, uh, And then the second way, 2,800 divided by 5.6, this time it looks like they're going at 500 miles per hour. Okay. So that's one thing that you might want to know about rate. Other thing that you could do with rate instead is to say that rate, when you're going with the wind, and if you're thinking about which one of these would they be going with the wind, well, I hope this one because it takes them less time. So I would say that their rate could be airspeed plus wind speed. In, in the other way, it looks like they're going against the wind, so it's airspeed minus wind speed. Okay. So one way that I think is one of the easiest to set up this equation is say the airspeed minus the wind speed equals 400 and the airspeed plus the wind speed equals 500. Okay, what I really like about just doing it like that is then we have a really nice, easy system of equations to solve by elimination because the w's are already opposites. So if I add these up, I'm going to get 2a equals 900. That means a must equal 450. And since a plus w equals 500, then w must equal 50. And that also works because 450 minus 50 is 400. So we think the airspeed is 450 miles per hour. And the wind speed, we think, is going at 50 miles per hour. Okay. And if I want to check that, then I need to know that if we're going with the wind, 450 and 50, 500 miles per hour, we just want to make sure that 2,800 divided by that 500 really gives us what we want, which was 5.6, and it does. And then the other way, 450 minus 50 is 400, so I'd say, does that 2,800 divided by the 400, that equals 7? That's the hours that we thought we should get. Okay, so that's all good to go. Um, there's other ways to solve this problem, too. Setting up a little bit more formal system of equations where you actually go distance equals rate times time. I'll show you that just in a second. You could have said um, A plus W times 5.6 equals 2,800 and A minus W times 7 equals 2,800, and you would get the same result if you set it up like that. It's totally okay if you like that, because um, then you have rate times time equals distance. If you prefer that, totally acceptable. All right, so those are the three main types of problems we're going to be focusing on, the mixture problems, the break-even problems, and then the, the rate distance rate timetables. It's going to be a little challenging, so just think of the beach and relax, and I'll see you in class.